Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE washer control board. It's going to be a very easy repair and it'll only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the instructions and the new control board. The control board controls all the functions of the washer. The manager should be changing it out so if you have an error code saying it's bad or it's not responding to your inputs. In order to change the part, we have to go around to the back of the machine. Now that we're on back, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out all the screws that hold the top on. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to take the top off. We're just going to pull back on it until it stops. And then we have to remove this trim up here. We're going to pull back on the trim a little bit to release it. There's a couple tabs that lock it into the top. Once you have the trim off, you can set it aside. And then we can lift the top off. If it doesn't lift straight up, you may have to push it in just a hair so it releases from the mounting tabs. And we can lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the top off, we're going to take the control panel off. First, we're going to take the detergent drawer out. All you have to do is pull it out, and then reach back and press on the lever to release it. You can pull it off and set it aside. Once you have the drawer out, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw that holds the control panel onto the dispenser. Now we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the four screws across the back of the console. Now that we have the screws out, there's a couple locking tabs that we have to lift up on. We're going to start on this one first and then do this side. Once you have this one released, we have to reach underneath and release the two locking tabs from the back side. Once you have it released, you can rotate the control panel down and then we can take all the wiring harnesses off the control board. To take the wiring harnesses off, they all have locking tabs on we have to press. These are all individual wiring harnesses so you can't mix them up when we put them back on. So all we're going to do is press all the locking tabs and pull them off. If you have one that you can't reach, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to press the locking tab. Once you have all the wiring harnesses off, you can pull the control panel assembly off the washer. We put a towel down so we don't scratch the control panel assembly. Once you have it set down, you can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the control board in. Once you have the screws out, there's three locking tabs across the top of the control panel as you're looking at it in the camera. We're going to use a small flathead screwdriver to release them and while you have it released we're going to pull up a little bit on the board so it doesn't snap back in. Just do that for all three. Once you have all three tabs released you can lift the control board out of the panel. Once you have it free you can set the control panel aside and then we have to take all the buttons off the control board. If you have to you can use a small flathead screwdriver. There's little locking tabs to release all these. Once you have them all off, we can grab the new control board. 
Here's the old control board next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Remember, you do have to follow along with the instructions once you have the board installed so you can program the new board. Now we can put all the buttons on the new control board. We're just going to set them into place. Anywhere there's these little cutouts, these hooks have to go in there. Set it down, snap it in. Once you have them in place, we can put the control board back onto the control panel. We're just going to lift it up carefully so the button should stay on, but if one falls off, you may have to put it back on. We're not going to turn it totally over. We're just going to kind of hold it at an angle like this. And we're going to bring the control panel in and line it up. And as you're pushing it in, if any of the buttons come out, you just have to set it back in there. And then you have to make sure that the shaft lines up with the knob hole. And then as you're pushing it in, you may have to turn the knob a little bit so the shaft goes up into the knob. Once you have it in, then we can turn the control panel assembly over. And we have to snap in the three locking tabs. Once you have it snapped in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws. Once you have the control board mounted, we can put the control panel back onto the washer. Remember when you're plugging these wire harnesses back in, they're all individual and different. So all you have to do is line them up and snap them in. You can't put them in the wrong spot. Once you have all the wiring harnesses connected, we can rotate the control panel up. And remember, you have to put the locking tabs into the slots. Once you have it lined up, snap it in. Now we can put in the screw that holds the control panel to the dispenser. We can use the Phillips screwdriver to put it in. Once you have it in, we can put the detergent drawer in. All you have to do is line it up on the rails and push it back into place. Now we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws that hold the control panel from the back. Now we can put the top back on the washer. When you're putting the top on, you want to make sure that these pins go into the holes right here before you push it in. All you have to do is set the top down so it goes onto the pins. And then before we push it in, we're going to put the trim piece back on. Before you put the trim piece on, you want to make sure the top is pushed in far enough so this rib right here isn't interfering with the tab going in. All you have to do is set the trim on. You want to make sure that these three tabs go into the openings. And then you can snap it on and push it forward a little bit so it locks into the top. Then we can push forward on the whole top. And then we can use that Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that you have the washer put back together, we're going to plug it back in and then it's going to come up with the three dashes on the display. You can locate your model number. Ours is the 6800, so we're four. 
So you just want to rotate the knob until yours comes up. Once you have it selected, we're going to press and hold the start key for at least three seconds until you hear a beep. Then we're going to press the power to reset it. Once you have a program, the washer is ready to go. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.